Well, we're thrilled to have you, but this is a, a very uh, different podcast for us because we don't get to see you today. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, your idea behind really keeping your face away from, you know, the media and all those things? Yeah, um, because uh, as far as you promised me, this is a great opportunity to showcase my art instead. So uh, this is what we're showing instead, which is uh, what I put mo most effort in doing. I, I didn't shave today, so uh, we're going to uh, use this space to, to showcase my art. Beautiful. Can you tell me a little bit about your journey? How do you begin and how this, you know, so persona came to be? Oh, man, I've been, I've been uh, well, mostly painting all my life. And so I guess I, I, I developed a sort of a, a very graphic uh, brain. And so nowadays I'm doing visual art and uh, it's not just painting anymore. It's, uh, but st it's still for, for the eye, you know. So I guess I, I'm doing uh, works uh, that hang on walls and they look like paintings. And then I'm doing sculptures and video and graphics and motion graphics and uh, everything for the eye, you know, and I'm, I'm enjoying myself still. You said you've been doing this, uh, you know, for a long time now. How early were you that you realized that you can do this for a living? That perhaps, you know, being an artist Ooh. could be a professional. Okay, so my the first time somebody paid me to paint something, I was 13 and I, I bought a BMX bike with the money. Uh, and ever since, I've always been, um, you know, doing little jobs, painting stores or whatever. Uh, I, you know, I, I paid my college tuition by, by painting the most random things you can imagine. But I... Um, but I didn't really think that I could be like a, like a, like an artist. When I say artist, I I I, I mean like a contemporary artist. Uh, me exhibiting at, at galleries and museums and stuff like that. Uh, for me, it's always been supernatural, like just to pick up like whatever tool and paint. Uh, then a little later, I went to art school, and uh, you know I I finished my degree, and I kind of understood what the whole circuit of, uh, of, of the art world was about. And I don't know, halfway through, I realized I could not do anything else other than, than my, my visual work, you know, but I've always been painting and, and making a living out of it. See, nowadays we talk to a lot of artists that uh, manage to be successful without going to art school. For you, how important were to go through a more academic way Mm -hmm. uh you know path to be able to really discover your vision you what do you have to say your voice per se i mean for me i felt and uh, back in the days i felt like i was wasting my time like big time i was like i was crazy you know why do they make me paint the, the same things over and over and i'm done with this stuff like uh what the hell but uh, on the other hand uh i did spend some time uh some time doing like you know, reading about art history, or like they, 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 there were a few lectures that I really enjoyed. And actually now looking back, that really gave me like a, like a good sense of, as I said, what, what the art world is about, what art history, uh, what, what happened uh, throughout the art history of, of humans, you know, how we, we, we kept adding knowledge to, to all this uh, graphical history. And now we, and now we got to this point and now I realized that I could add something to it as well. So I guess that, that was, that was the, the one important thing, you know, the, the, the fact that I, that I learned about our history, you know, I think that's very, very important in order to be an artist these days. Do you think that's an aspect that perhaps is overlooked nowadays? Artists just want to create and think about, you know, their vision in the work and not very much looking back and understanding what came before. I, I do, you know, like, um, like, uh, as we, we all have a, a visual culture, you know, we all share that. Or, I mean, some people have, uh, you know, they, they know more about whatever, like, uh, abstract painting or Spanish paintings or whatever, but uh, we all have share a sort of common, uh, cultural visual culture. And I, uh, I guess, you know, understanding about that it's very, very important in order, in order to contribute 
if you just, uh, I mean, if you just look inside and just understand yourself and just make work for yourself, I mean, I'm not saying it, it can be great. It can actually, when, when you get somebody, when, when you actually move somebody with that, it can be very, 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 very deep and very moving. But I think it's very, very important, in my opinion, to to understand the whole history and and try to contribute globally, you know, in, in a, from a global perspective. Well, because you're someone who really paying attention to the aspect of the history of art, do you, is that something you think about, about your legacy? You think about how your work will impact in the future? No, no, no not really, man. I mean, for me, yeah, I, I do look at art history because I think it's something that we share as humans, you know, and, and, and if you want to make an impact there, you can understand that. I mean, I, I think in music, it's something, it's something that, that, that I think it's a great example in order to, 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 um, to express this, this idea, you know, like say, for example, like uh, 200 years ago, uh, songs used to be like an hour and a half, you know, there used to be operas and stuff. Nowadays songs, they're like three, four minutes, you know? So you gotta understand where you're at, you know, you, if you want to be a musician and you want to be heard, like listen, you probably, you want to make songs that are about three, four minutes these days, you know, you can totally make a song that's three and a half hours. That's up to you. It's fine. Now, who the hell is going to listen to you? You know, like you want to be, uh, you want to, you want to know what your, what your context is and uh, you want to, you want to know what happened before you want to know what's happening these days. And then you act uh, accordingly, you know? So I, that, that's what I mean about understanding your history and, uh, and where you're at at the moment, you know, your context. So it's very much creating for the time that you're living in. So perhaps in 2024 right now, you use music as an example, but in our world, what are the things that you feel like people need to focus on to be seen? Um, I don't know. There, there's like many paths, you know, and some are highways, you know, like say, for example, uh, now there's a, Oh, probably two years ago, NFT, that was a whole highway to, to get in and explore. Uh, these days, probably you want to, I don't know, uh, probably what's trending is uh, um, AI, art, and then generative stuff. Uh, probably street art uh, used to be 10 years ago, something very big. That's actually a path or, a, or literally a highway that I took, you know, and took me places. Um, but um, these days, probably digital art and um, AI art. I, you know, I, I'm an old geezer already. You know, like I have one foot in the in the digital world, but the one foot is analog, and I'm there, and I'm I'm not changing. You know, because I found myself, and and I'm not. I, I don't need to get on any wave in order to to be seen. You know, the I know where I'm at, and I'm probably from digi different gener generation. You know, I'm from mm -hmm. uh, almost almost forty already. Jesus Christ. But, um, um, you know, but the, if I, if I were, if I were a kid and um, trying to, to find something interesting in art, probably AI, it's a, it's a great path to take. See, I like where you use it though, as a highways, so, right? You said the street art, perhaps 10 years ago, NFT, they're kind of, we don't know what's going to happen. Some people still believe that it's going to be back even stronger. And now we're talking about AI. Uh, a lot of people have this idea that art needs to be pure, that, but it sounds like what you're telling me that you can still exercise your vision, but in different platform that will help you be seen in those different medias. Is that what you're trying to suggest that perhaps you can still be true to what you believe in your, your vision, but you just have to use a different uh, way to reach the demographic? That's exa exactly what I mean, actually. The, um, of course, I mean, the best art is the most honest art. Like, you, you want to find yourself because we're all unique. We all have our uniqueness, you know, and you, you, you want to find that, actually. Uh, and, and that's something selfish, too, you know, like, uh, like uh, that's something you got to do for yourself. I mean, like, uh, like uh, I think it's a great tool. Art is a great tool to discover yourself, you know. Um, I'm actually, I couldn't be happier, you know. I'm a very happy person. Um, because I'm actually, you know, I feel very, very comfortable with my work. I feel that, that I know who I am, you know, so that's one thing that's great. Now, how do you convey that? You know, should I make like a 17 hour song because that's who I am or should I adapt myself in order to, uh, be empathic and in order to, 
to you know to be uh in in a safe environment with my I mean, in a good environment with my with my peers you know i i think you have to find a balance and that's actually that the, the way i say that about art i say that about being a human in society you know i can i can i can be i don't know i can be a murderer you know i can but uh but but i gotta civil get civilized and i gotta how do i show myself in public in social in society you know should I kill people because uh, that's my instinct or should I, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I guess it's cool to find yourself, but at the same time, it's good to be good, you know, for, for the rest. So you want to, you want to make a, something of value. So you you want to make an impact, but it's a, something that's a good impact. You, know? you said that the most, uh, the best art is the honest art that you're quite happy with who you are and you, through art, you were able to figure it out yourself. How much has your art changed and how that has influenced your personality? Would you say, have you changed as a person, personality-wise, you know, beliefs in the last, no, I don't know, 30, 25 years you've been doing this now. Uh, how much has you changed and what aspect have you been able to kept since those early days? Dude, um, I, I mean, I'm always changing. I, I guess that's actually one of the, of the main aspects of my work, actually, that eventually what, what I figured is that, uh, um, it, it's something that I'm incorporating in my work more and more is the fact that the, the works are transformable, they're adaptable. That's something that I learned from, from graffiti and from street art. You will fly somewhere to paint something. And then you realize that you don't have the right colors or the, 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 uh, the crane doesn't reach a certain part, part of the wall or that the cops are chasing you or that it gets, it started raining, you know, and, it, and then, but you still adapt. And, and, uh, I guess that, uh, that's, that's constant in my life. You know, I'm always adapting. I'm, uh, my works, uh, this is something that I'm, uh, trying to implement and, uh, that's happening in my studio practice. The works are transformable. They, they adapt, they change. I think it's, uh, that's, that's actually who I am, you know, some, somebody very, very adaptable and, and that, that, that can enjoy, uh, you know, any, any aspect uh, or any format, you know? Um, but yeah, my, my work keeps changing, man. And in fact, I'm, and, and I'm not scared, you know, that's, uh, that's what, what should happen, I guess. Uh, I mean, there, there are certain, certain uh, bodies of work that my, my collectors and my galleries keep asking for, and I'm not going back to those, you know, like uh, you, I started making art because I, I could find cool things, you know, and I'm not going to get stuck doing the same thing over and over. You, you want to keep evolving. Uh, in, in fact, right now I'm, uh, I'm, so I'm sitting right now in my new studio, which is this, it's a house from 1975 that I've been renovating and, and working around that. And, um, and ever since I bought the house, that was two years ago, uh, I knew for a fact that this, this place was going to change my work big time. And dude, I'm, I'm experiencing that uh, already, you know, and, but it's, it's so enjoyable, you know, that's, uh, because it's changing my work, but it's changing me and I'm learning and it's, um, it's great. Can you give me an example how the house being there for two years has you know, changing your work and even yourself? So the, the, the house is very, it has a very unique style. It's a space age architecture. So everything there is all about round shapes and, um, everything is, uh, you know how casinos, they don't have like, uh, square corners because that's supposed to be, um, uh, related to the, to the part of your brain that's rational. Uh, whereas the, the round corner is all about like, um, how you call it instinct and emotion and all, all that. Uh, I'm already feeling that like, it's already changing my studio work, you know, like, um, uh, I knew it was going to happen and it's happening. Like if you're working in this environment, um, you know, it's changing me. Like, uh, I'm used to, to exhibiting in, uh, white cubes. So it's all about like white, uh, square corners and it's all very like simple and minimalistic. And, and now here I'm like all surrounded by, by, by round uh, things and then, it's changed me, you know, but, uh, as I said, that's what, what we came to do, you know, to like change, to learn, to be, to be, uh, permeable. Is that, is that a word? 
uh, to be to be easy to to learn new things and to to be loose. You know, I'm happy that way. Anyway. <laughs> I love what you said earlier too, that like you have your collectors and galleries that wanted to do uh, certain things specific that are already done and that's been successful. And usually a lot of artists fall in that trap when they manage to, you know, get success in a specific thing, they double down. And again, you know, I understand people need to make a living and there's a lot of different things, creative opportunities that way as well. But it seems like you, you, you were pretty sad in the way that like, no, I, I'm moving on. I'm going to something else, the next thing. Uh, do you, do you worry about perhaps it's something you're going to look back and say, man, I wish I had, you know, done a little bit more here. So I could have a little bit more financial freedom to explore all the things in other endeavors. Uh, so yeah, man, like, uh, you know, I've been, I've been, uh, Everywhere, like uh, I mean, for years I didn't have financial freedom, you know. So, uh, uh, but um, so I, I, would, I would actually get, you know, two commissions of painting, like whatever store, uh, metal shutter, you know, to survive. But I kept, I tried at least I tried to keep my art uh, pure, and I'm still there, you know. And I'm actually very, very lucky these days, you know. I'm everything is, is great financially and in every aspect. So, dude, more than ever, you know, like I gotta keep committed to, like, you know, do my thing. Like, uh, um, I don't know who said that, uh, ne ne you know, something that uh, ne never pay, pay attention to the public because the public is always the public is always wrong. I think that that was Oscar Wilde, but I, I don't know the exact phrase. Anyway, you got I guess what that means is not that the, the 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 audience doesn't know shit. It's not that. It's that you know you, you know, and uh, and you are the 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 curator of all this shit. So you, you know, you're supposed to know what uh, you know. So of course, like uh, like if I go see, you know, uh, Bob Dylan in concert, I'm probably gonna be asking for for uh, the Rolling Stone song, you know. But uh, I mean, dudes probably still um write the new shit you know like uh it's probably more interesting than new shit you know are you a more uh, spontaneous with your process and the creative in the creative process or methodical do you really just not think about it really no work the hiccups about what you want to create it or more like all right just put some music and go with the flow yeah no no i'm very very rational um yeah I, I do think about everything and uh, i mean my, my my work is say for example if you think about one of my paintings you know it's not like you know like you do a couple splashes of paint here and there and make it work you don't know no. everything is very thought of but uh of course when i when i'm drawing i usually actually these days i i i, I left my pencils and i just draw on the computer directly always uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm trying, if I'm designing a, a painting, I, I, sometimes I try random things that, uh, that are, you know, I, I play a little and then I found, um, you know, interesting stuff and then I leave them, but usually everything, uh, you know, I, I so sometimes I, I just think about the work. I, I think about many things at the same time, but sometimes I'm thinking about the work for like a month and then I sit on the computer and I just design it in like, you know, two minutes. Sometimes you just, um, you know, I'm very, I, I guess I used to be a very good drawer and, and painter before uh, when I did art school and all that stuff. But uh, I guess these days I'm so much better with the computer. I'm so fast, you know, I'm like, I can really like uh, make the images that I have in my brain in like no time, you know. So sometimes it's more about like just thinking, you know, like it happening once again. And that process of having your computer and get, you know, designing or even being able to draw over there is something that you, do you have a set sketch for that? Is it something like, all right, on Tuesdays is the day I, I just focus on creating or it's more spontaneous is whatever comes to you, you just find the, the computer and they start sketching or drawing. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, that, that is spontaneous. I mean, sometimes you do have a commission to, to do and, you know, I mean, people at my studio, my studio manager, they say, yeah, hey, like, uh, we, we were supposed to make this painting and uh, the, 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 the gallery uh, wants something like this because a collector, blah, blah. And then I have, I have a list, you know, and sometimes I'm like, 
I have an idea for this kind of work, you know, boom, and I make it happen. Uh, so usually when, when I have those, those sort of re requests, you know, I know they're coming. I know people want that or I, I know I have the commitment. So that's in my head. But, uh, but sometimes I, I just, you know, in a month I can't make one of those works, you know, so I'm just focusing on something else. And, but all of a sudden maybe it happens or maybe not, you know, that I guess that that's very spontaneous. Yeah. Yeah. And how is that conversation happening? As you mentioned, you're talking to a gallery, you have an exhibition coming up, or perhaps in collaborations, you've done a lot of that with several multiple brands as well. Early on, they know your aesthetic, they know what you're about. So they're already coming with an idea, but that conversation seems to be very mutual, right? You have to uh, hear the point of view, limitations, budgets, or restraints, whatever it is that are coming to you, and you have to adapt to that. Uh, how, 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 how those conversation goes usually, how do they start and, and what's the good sign for you that this could be an interesting collaboration? Because I'm sure you get approached to a lot of people mm. to do several different things. Dude, I mean, collaborations for me, they have to be, when we're talking about collaboration with brands, right? Not with other Correct. artists, I guess. Yeah. Um, so they, they gotta be brands that I'm interested in beforehand. You know, it's very, very strange that there's a, a brand that I never heard about and they reach out and we're like, Oh, awesome. You know, let's do it. Usually it's, uh, you know, things that I already know that, that I know what they do and I'm interested. And, uh, usually the process is very, very enjoyable, you know, safe. Uh, I'm about, I'm about actually to launch my third collaboration with Zenith, the, uh, the, the watch brand and dude, when, when, when they approached, I, I knew it was going to be great, you know? Uh, because, um, I did know a little bit about watches back then. I, I had a couple of watches, you know, I knew a little, uh, I mean, it's been, this is my third, uh, like edition I'm dropping with them and to just going to Switzerland, learning how, how they make the watches, learning about the, the whole deal. I knew it was going to be enjoyable and great, you know? So that's how it works. Like, uh, I would never work with a, with a brand that that I don't care about, you know, like I'll never collaborate with McDonald's, you know, like for instance, <laughs> you know. there's nothing for me to learn from them, you know, at least that's what, at least I think that, I don't know. That's yeah. funny. Uh, you said that immediately when they reach out to you, the, you knew there was going to be a great collaboration. Um, are you intuitive? Like you just kind of pick up that's kind of energy and vibe from people. You get a sense this is going to be great. Oh, this, this piece is going to be awesome. It's going to sell. Cause a lot of times when I talk to people, they feel like their favorite piece never sells and they get so frustrated and they're like, Oh my God. Mm. And that one sold for how much? So there's all that dialogue and that, that kind of contradiction. Do you usually have a good sense of, uh, what, what would do well for you? I guess I do, man. Yeah. I mean, this is what I were talking about before. Like, uh, you can be, uh, I guess you gotta be empathic, you know, like, uh, but for art and for, for business and for your social skills and, and understand a little bit how your mom feels, you know, like you, you know, I, I, my dog right here, he knows exactly that he's, if he starts chewing that cable, I'm going to be mad, you know, like, uh, he's going to be a little empathic with me as well, you know, <laughs> like, like, uh. Yeah, of course you can do your, your, what we were talking about before, you can make a 17 hour song because that's how you feel, but bro, like, uh, chances are <laughs> nobody's going to listen to that shit, you know, <laughs> like, I mean, and it, and that's part of art. You need to be able to share it. It's not for yourself. Are you going to be, you, you want to be able to share your art? Is that what you said? Yeah, that's what I'm saying for you. It's important that art needs to be shared and understood, not perhaps understood, but needs to be seen. That it's not like a, a, a single, like just for you perhaps. Well, it depends. Like, um, like, and, and this is what, what I was saying before that, that is my vision because I want to make art that's global because I'm a global person, you know, like, uh, I travel all the time. I, so, you know, I dress for, for a global audience, you know, I try. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, uh, but maybe like if you're from a, from a Maori town, New Zealand, you, you probably want to make art for that town, you know, which is fine too, you know, but, uh, but then in that case, you want to be empathic with that town. You want to, you want to, you want to understand how that, that town feels, for instance, right? Uh, 
of course you can make art just for you or for your girlfriend or for your mom or for or for whoever you know that it's all fine it just depends what your what you at least try to understand what your audience you want it, you want to be you know uh, i want my i want my art to be to be about uh, you know I tend, and this is something that I thought about a lot when I when I used to do murals all around the world. I, I used to travel a lot before, and I used to do murals everywhere. And people used to ask me, like, uh, "So this thing that you painted in in Tahiti is uh, it, does it have anything to do with the uh, with the locals or with the or with Tahiti in general, with Polynesia?" And I'm like, "No, bro." And like, uh, it, I, it's the same thing that I paint here. I paint in New York, and I paint in Madrid or wherever. You know, like I. I tend to try to address a generation rather than a location. You know, I'm trying to talk to to the people that lived what I'm living. That say I'm from a generation that we we used to have cassette tapes and now we have AI, right, and everything in between. So that that is my generation. I'm trying to speak to that present. You know, uh, now some people might might want to address the as I said their local town in in Sevilla or whatever, you know, but, uh, I mean, my audience, at, at least I'm trying to talk to a global audience. I think that's so important to understand what you said, that you're trying to talk to a generation, you not a location. And I think that's a very clear thing for artists to understand because a lot of times we're trying to be inclusive. We're trying to be more dynamic, you know, and, and if you, people perhaps compromise and to make sure they can fit in with, to be respectful perhaps of some cultures as well. But you're pretty much saying, like, you have, my generation is all over the world. Doesn't matter if you're in Tahiti, in Spain, in South Africa, in South America. You will find people from that generation, and we enjoy, we like the same things. So I'm not really concerned where they're from. It's just who they are and where, how they were born and what, when, they were, when they were alive. Yeah. And, and, and I think, I mean, and it's not... Um... It's not a coincidence that I, I'm that 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 is my or at least what I try to be my audience is because I think it's important. You know, I think we live in a very disruptive uh, period in time. Um, I mean, w when humans invented invented writing, that's where history started. You know, and then we invented the press, and that that meant that the piece of information could be repeated x times, and that changed humanity forever. And now we invented invented the internet which means that the piece of information can be uh, repeated I immediately and infinitely all over the world in seconds, you know? So, and that's changing the world as well. So, you, you know, for me, it's, I understand that for me, it's so important that that's my, that's my main theme. You know, I'm not going to be talking about flamenco singers in Sevilla, for instance, you know, because I think that's not what's up, you know, like, you know that, uh, at least that's not what's the most important thing for me, you know? However, the, the advent of the digital era and everything we're experimenting. Um, that's, that's what I'm interested about, basically, you know, and that's something that's happening to everybody in the world. Yeah. I want to go back and talk about that 13-year-old when you got your first commission. What, what were you like as a 13-year-old? What, what were you into it? Um, so I was into graffiti, man. I started doing graffiti when I was 12. I used to spend a lot of time in the, on the streets. I'm uh, I'm originally Argentinian, but I moved to Spain when I was uh, ten, nine, nine-ish, ten, and um, and so my parents used to have like a like a small store, like stand on the street, and so I spent all my time on the street, just skating around and doing break dance and painting graffiti mostly. So that was me, man. I was very busy uh, painting on people's properties. You know, the funny thing, um, we're, I think we're about the same age. Uh, I live in Buenos Aires when I was 12. Oh, you did? So, no, I think you, you already left Buenos Aires, right? Yes. I mean, yes. Yeah, you already I left, left Buenos Aires in 96. Yeah, so never mind then. Yeah, so we were there probably <laughs> at the same time. Um, but what, what, what was it like in like you know, early 90s in Buenos Aires, being a street, uh, walking around, you know, doing your thing and, and playing around? What was it like for you? So that that was in Spain when I when I started doing graffiti. That was in Spain. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah man. And it was it was great. Like, uh, I mean, I remember having fun, you know, like uh, we would never 
really had much, you know, we, we moved over, we moved here because of, uh, my parents needed a job, you know, uh, but I remember being happy, you know, just, uh, running around and, you know, I, I don't know, I'm, uh, one way or another, I've always been an artist, you know, so I've always remember being very focused on, on my art, you know, however, I mean, somehow I used to play football, you know, soccer uh, when I was a kid, but then I started painting and, and like painting graffiti and that's it, you know, I left everything. I was, I was like tunnel vision forever. And I'm still here. <laughs> was it easy to find a community in Spain of uh, graffiti artists that was on the streets kind of getting going and really expressing themselves? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, back then, and, I mean, graffiti is kind of crazy, man. Like, uh, that's been around since the, the, the 60s, late 60s, and it's still going, bro. Like, there's still people, like, meeting and doing that stuff all over the world. It's crazy. I don't know how who's going to stop it, but uh, somebody needs to. <laughs> it's crazy. And uh, back then, in the late 90s, it was booming here in Spain. And I guess it still is, you know. Like, the streets are painted. And there's many, many artists coming up from, there, from, from that environment, actually. At what point, was there ever a point uh, that you realize, I'm good at this? Something that click? Perhaps not some uh, commission or someone paying you, but your self -re -re realization that I have something to say and I'm good at this, what I'm doing right now. I mean, I always knew that I was good at painting. Um, I, I, and, I, and I guess that's something about like having a sense more developed than other senses. Like, so some people are good for music, they have a very, very good ear. I don't, but I have a very good eye. Like, I, I, I see, I look at the world through my eyes, 80%, 10% uh, my ears and 10% the touch, you know, like a uh, hundred, like, you know, if, if, if I ever go blind, I would probably kill myself. I'm telling you that right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. Like I've always knew I could draw. I always knew, I mean, you give me any tool and I know what to do, you know and I mean? I, I don't know. Uh, and I guess I'm, I'm still, I'm still learning, you know, like I know, even though, I mean, you know, I'm not saying that what I'm doing is great or, or anything, but, uh, but I know that I can express myself, um, making things that are meant to be seen, you know? And so I don't know. I always felt very confident, very, very, very confident. And do you feel that this talent or this ability to, to, to be creative is almost like an exercise. It's something that needs to be practicing over and over and over again. Or perhaps, you know, some people just have a gift. Some people are just born with it and they manage to, you know, make things happen. Um, I mean, well, well, if we're talking about like uh, the, the act of painting, for instance, or drawing or drawing, uh, that's something that can be taught uh, and can be learned. Like, uh, when I, when I did my five year degree in art school, I remember, uh, year one to be, you know, have people in class that they could, they never hold, uh, they never held a, uh, like a charcoal, you know, and they could not control shit at all. Five years later, they, they were really good at painting, you know, like, uh, painting from like still lives and like, you know, from natural and stuff like that. So you can learn that, but I guess, so, you know, if you, if you teach me for, for years how to play piano, I can probably learn a few songs, but I don't think I'll ever be good to compose music, I guess, you know? So I, I guess in art is the same, like you can, you can learn techniques, but, uh, I guess some people are more, have the eye more developed, you know, I don't know, in order to make visual art in general, but however, like uh, contemporary art, it's so broad, it's mm -hmm. so wide, the, the, the range of things that you can make. Like, uh, you know, sometimes, I mean, performance art is considered contemporary art, for instance. So you don't really need to have a very fine eye. Uh, maybe, I mean, there's, there's many ways to express yourself, you know? 
So this is how I see it, and you tell me if I'm right or wrong. A lot of times I feel like techniques, like art, like anything else, anything creative is almost, almost like a language, right? So the more technique and perhaps the more experience you have is vocabulary that you learn that you can add to your book or to your stories. And of course, the more vocabulary, the more, you know, uh, experience and you know how to play with the sentences, you know how to make phrases and things like that, perhaps more interesting the, the work can become. But that doesn't mean that knowing all the beautiful words in the, voc in the dictionary, you will have a masterpiece, but it certainly can help get in there. Is that perhaps a good way to see it? Absolutely. That's a great, that's a great way to say it. In fact, I've been, you know, learning how, I mean, for years I studied like oil painting, whatever. Now I'm, uh, I'm trying to unlearn, you know, like I'm, I'm trying to not use all those techniques so I can focus on new ones. However, I still have that in my vocabulary, you know. Um, uh, the, the other day I was listening to, listening to Dave Chappelle and he was saying that uh, he's so good at writing jokes that uh, he can write jokes uh, backwards these days. He said, let me take, you, let me take you an example. It's so funny. Uh, you know, like uh, the more you know about jokes, you know, you can, you can write jokes any, you know, any way this, now, you know. So that's great. It's great to expand your vocabulary. That's for sure. So you said earlier as well that you have a brand new studio and you're expanding uh, the studio as well in terms of what all the you know, art that you're pursuing, all the things that we're working on. What are some of the things that you're mostly excited about? Not right now, perhaps in projects, but when you look at 10, 15 years from now, what are the things that kind of get you excited and motivated, you know, that you kind of fire you up a little bit? Dude, um, I don't have long-term goals, but uh, I do want to keep learning, you know, uh, learning new things. Right now, this house, I've been renovating this place for two years. Uh, you know, I've been, I feel like an architect right now, you know, I'm not at all, <laughs> don't get me wrong, but I uh, do, like I've been learning so much and it feels great. So, I don't know, like uh, we'll see where, 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 where it goes, you know, but, uh, but it, but I do think it's important and that's something I know. And I don't know if a lot of people know this, but as soon as you're good with something, pass to the next page, you know, forget about that. I think that's something that uh, I think I, I, I experience and I'm very happy about that. And uh, hopefully that, that keeps uh, being the, the leitmotif. If you could learn something overnight, anything, what would it be? Chinese. Mandarin. Yeah. It's a whole, it's a whole fucking continent, that place, you know? I know. It'd be great well, to understand know, them. I, I'm originally from Brazil, but both of my daughters has been doing Mandarin since they're five years old. They don't speak a lick of Portuguese, but they sure can speak a little bit of Chinese. <laughs> Amazing, man. Amazing. That's great. I mean, I go there sometimes and I wish I could just understand them more. You know, it's so vast. It's... Yeah. So huge, you know, the, the culture, like they, they, they invented everything, gunpowder, they invented, uh, I mean, they invented everything, you know, but China has been around for a long time and it'd be at least great to understand them, you know? Yeah, I, I agree with you. Felipe, before letting you go, I have three questions that I ask everybody on the show. And, uh, so here we are. Um, I need you to recommend us a book. It can be something you read recently or one of your favorites, doesn't really mm -hmm. matter. Uh, something to watch, TV show, movie, documentary, it's up to you. And I guess, who should we invite uh, to be on the show next? All right. Uh, I know the um, answer one, two, and three as well. So answer one will be Capture the Light, Capture the Light by Arthur uh, Zajonk. And it's, uh, I, I don't know if I said the, the last name right, but uh, it's a great book if you want to understand light. Uh, everything from a philosophical perspective, from a um, physical perspective, it's a great book. Um, TV show or movie? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm going to say Annie Hall, mm -hmm. just uh, because it used to be my favorite movie for a long time. And... Um, and it's, it's always a great rewatch. Uh, it's, it's always great to, to rewatch it. And um, 
artists, the usual artists or anybody. Like, anybody like, can uh, be anybody in the creative field, architect, designers, anyone that you think would be cool and you like to, you know, learn from. Mm, it'd be great if you interview Fred, Frederick Plateaus from, from Liege mm -hmm. in Belgium. He's a great artist, probably one of my favorites. And he's a, he's a dear friend of mine and uh, a great character. Excellent. We like that. Uh, Philip, well, I appreciate you taking the time. It's been, it's been uh, great just to get to know you a little bit more, get into the world and, and picking your brand. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you, man. Thank you for, for taking the time. I know I've been hard to catch because I've been so busy, but uh, thank you so much for having patience with me and uh, um, hope to see you soon.